Hello, my name is Charles Metz III, and today I'll be showing you how to use XGen to quickly uh, generate alpha cards for real-time game characters' hair. In the past, uh, I think the best way to do it has always been to use uh, hand-placing methods for generating cards, and indeed there are other ways to do it, but I think that XGen offers a few tools that make this really, really simple and easy to do, and XGen in general just seems to speed up the process. Um, and after I show you how to do that with XGen, we're going to show you how to get it out of XGen and to get it into actual geometry that you can use in an engine. So the first thing that we're going to need to do is we're going to need a head. So I've brought in this uh, young boy head and we're going to be using this for our demonstration purposes today. Uh, in general, uh, you're going to want something that has relatively uh, good topology on it just because I'm going to be essentially using the faces here to make a selection of where I want the hair to grow. You can indeed just select the head and XGen will just put everything uh, on it and you can use masking techniques that it gives you to tell it where to grow hair. But for our purposes I just think it's a lot less of a headache if you just select the geometry you want. So uh, let's just make a quick selection of his scalp. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. There. Here, uh, there, here. Okay, and that should roughly make for pretty good uh, layout for a scalp. Okay, now the next thing we need to do is open up XGen itself. Now, if this is your first time using XGen, your first time uh, using it in 2015, which XGen uh, was fully integrated into, if I remember correctly, uh, it's not going to be up here by default. So what we're going to need to do is go to Windows, Settings, Preferences, Plugin Manager, and you would need to scroll to the bottom. Uh, there's the XGen plugin directory there. Just load, load, auto load, and when you do that, you should see it pop up here, and it'll also plop a directory a tab right there on your shelf. So now that we have XGen loaded, we need to actually open the XGen window. So first thing we're going to need to do is create a new description, and this is going to pop up. You can actually just leave this all as the default settings if you really want, um, but. Just for the sake of argument, let's just name this Poo, and let's just name this More Poo, because I have the maturity of a 12-year-old. So uh, what we're going to do is select Groomable Splines, and as you can see here, uh, some of these options become grayed out based on your selection, just because certain things are not usable with some of the uh, primitive options that you have. I think Groomable Splines is going to give you the most control and the most bang for your buck, so that's what I will be showing in this video. Uh, there's really nothing to even select after you select Rumble Splines because everything else is grayed out, so we're just going to hit Create. Now, you notice that it's generated um, a bunch of pink X's. Those are essentially one pink X for every face telling XGen where it can put hair and where it can't. So you also notice we have these yellowish brown lines and these uh, what look to be cards generating at the top. You notice they're constantly moving around, and that's because by default, uh, these cards will be set to face the camera at all times. These splines down here are what we will essentially be grooming with our tools. So the first thing we're going to need to do is we're going to want to look under our primitives and we're going to turn off face camera. Now you notice that after I turn it off it's still facing the camera and that's because the way the uh, previewer is set up in terms of uh, the my viewport is you have to tell it to update everything automatically and now that it's done that you notice everything's looking proper. So, uh, there are a few, there's actually one other option we're going to tweak here, but we will tweak that later at the appropriate time. So what we're going to do is we're now going to look under our grooming tools, and what we're going to do is we're going to start cranking our density. Notice that as you crank the density, it populates it with more hair in real time. You also notice it's also really long. So what we're going to do is we're going to start cranking our length down because I want this to be a short hairstyle. Maybe. Keep in mind that uh, because we're going to be using this for alpha card generation, that you're 
actually going to want your cards to be a little bit longer than you might initially think, and that's just to leave yourself with enough wiggle room when you're painting the textures that you don't end up getting uh, the textures cut off on, on the cards. So let's just make this an even point two. And I actually want the cards to be just a little bit wider. It's too wide. Let's just make that one five. Okay. And we actually don't need to fiddle with uh, any of those other options. Up here you're going to find your brushes, and these brushes are relatively self-explanatory, and I encourage you just to play around with them and see what they do. Uh, but the main ones that I'm going to be sticking to are Pose, Orient, and Smooth. And I'm not actually going to go through the entire grooming process. I have a preset that I, not a preset, I have one that I've already made uh, from earlier experiments, which I'll load up to show you what a finished one might look like. But overall, it sh should only take roughly 15, maybe 20 minutes tops to get everything looking just the way you want to. So first we're going to switch to the Pose brush. And what the Pose brush is going to allow us to do is to basically start setting the direction that the cards are going to be facing. And I'm going to set these cards so they're roughly facing where I would expect the hair uh, to grow. The direction I would expect the hair to grow, excuse me. Okay, okay. Switch to the top here. And I'm going to get a little bit of a circular pattern here for the uh, crown of the hair, as I believe it's called. Okay, so roughly this is how I want it to look. and you're actually given a few mirroring tools uh, to quickly uh, generate changes uh, onto another side from one side. So, boop. Notice how I just copied everything that was over there, moved it over there. So now that the hair is roughly facing where it should be facing, we're going to switch to the Orient tool, and we're going to use that to basically brush the hair. And I'm just clicking and dragging, and you notice the splines are moving and the cards are adjusting after I release the click. Now, at the end of the day, um, these cards will not literally be what we'll be uh, exporting. We're, we're going to be exporting when we've got the hair looking good are the splines, but uh, this is still a good way to get an idea of your placement and how you want the cards to look in the final output. And what we do end up uh, convert when we do end up converting the splines into the uh, actual geometry, it'll roughly look like this. There'll be a few settings you can tweak here and there, but for the most part, what you see is what you're going to get when you're all set, said and done. So I'm just going to keep clicking, 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 clicking. Now, let's say you do this and you uh, realize you might want a bit more coverage. You can increase the density, but if you do that, it will actually reset the positioning and the hair will be sticking out everywhere again. You can, however, increase the length whenever you want and not lose the positioning of the cards. And it's the same thing with the width. You can, make, so you can increase the width whenever you want and the cards will keep their position.
Now we're going to switch to the smooth tool and we're going to start smoothing this out. And let's actually take the length down a bit more. Let's try making that 1.8. And if for any reason the window preview doesn't update, just hit refresh on the eye icon there, and it'll automatically update it again for you. Sometimes that'll happen. I don't really know why, but it does. And if it does, just click that little eye icon. Now, like I said, I'm not going to, you know, go through the entirety of just sitting here grooming just for the sake of time. So, after you've fiddled and played around with things, what you should end up with would be something like this. Now, I changed the, the color of the material a little bit, but it's the exact same techniques in grooming. I also had my density cranked a little bit more. Here, my density was 285, for instance, and my length was much, much shorter. But as you can see, that's actually pretty good coverage. Uh, there are a few areas that would need uh, a bit more in terms of cards, but we can manually do that um, after we get the actual geometry from this. So we're about ready for export, but there are a few things we need to check first, and that's mainly going to be the directory that it's going to spit it out in. And if we go here, we can select a folder for it to export our content out to. And what it's going to be exporting are the actual curves, which we will then turn into geometry. So select our folder, extrin here, and hit select folder. And when we hit create mail file, it'll spit out a mail file for us. But before we even do that, by default, modifier CV count is set to 5. And that's going to cause a problem when you actually convert this into geometry because that's going to be you know, way more geometry per card than you're actually going to need. By dropping it down to three and making sure uh, this up here is set to three, you're going to ensure that you have uh, good enough to keep, you know, general curve of the uh, card, but not so much that it's stupid overkill. So, now we're going to go under our preview output, and we're going to hit create mail file, and that'll spit out our file. Now, we're going to go make a new scene, And we're going to import our file. Now, because this was a pre-made thing that I did earlier, that's why it says Description 3 instead of uh, More Poo, or whatever silly name I picked. I'm going to hit Open. And these are all the curves that were generated from our grooming. Now, when I initially did that grooming for the uh, example that I brought up, that was roughly 15 minutes of work. So, it, like I said before, it's really fast um, to get this done. And what we're going to do is we're going to select one curve just as a test curve to begin with. Um, just This is just to ensure that we get the proper settings that we want. Now, we're going to need to look under our excuse me, rendering tabs, because we're going to want our paint effects menu. And I think I may have accidentally clicked my Sketchfab export. There we go. <laughs> go away. So under paint effects, there are a few options we're going to want to set up, and that's mainly template brush settings. Now, by default, our brush width is going to be 0 0.05, which is going to give us a card that I think, in general, is way too wide. Um, I like to keep that at 0 .02, and that should give you a card that's still wide enough to give you good coverage, but not so wide that it looks ridiculous. The most important one, though, is flatness 1. If you leave this at 0, what you will get will be a tube, and 
unless you're doing dreadlocks, you know, or unless you're doing a particular hairstyle that needs tubes like that, that's going to be overkill. If you want to keep it as, as cards, you're going to want to set that at 1. If you keep it as 0.5, for instance, you'll get a squish tube, and the higher and lower you go, the higher you go, the closer it'll get to just flattening out into a card, and the lower you go, the closer it'll get to being a full-on tube. So I'm going to set this at 1 because we want cards. Now, what you can do, if there are a bunch of different type of styles you can you uh, want to talk, try out, is under Paint Effects, Save Brush Preset. So, I'm going to make sure this is set to point 2, and give it a name. Um, the one that I made previously, I just named to Xgen Hair, but you can name it whatever you want for the label and the overlay directory. It'll save it to your shelf, and you hit Save Brush Preset. To give you an example of what that'll do, I'll put this back at 5, and I'll put this back at 0, and hit close. This is a brush preset that I made previously, but when I click it, it automatically ensures that these settings are all what I want for the cards I'm going to generate. So, oops, I still had my brush select, excuse me. We're going to switch to our selection tool, we're going to select all of those car, uh, curves, and we're going to go to Paint Effects, and we're going to go to Curve Utilities, and we're going to go to Attach Brush to Curves. Notice what I was talking about earlier. This is one, two, three, four, five uh, divisions roughly for a card, which isn't too bad or overkill. This line going down the middle, just ignore that. That's technically just the curve that you're seeing rendering along with the card in the viewport. Uh, in reality, this is just going to be one, two, three, four, five cards. I mean, five uh, uh, quads, so ten tries. Now, next thing we're going to want to do is we're going to open up our outliner. And we're going to want to go from there and select all of the strokes. Now we're going to want to go to modify. We're going to want to go to convert. And we're going to want to convert our paint effects to polygons. But before you click that button, open up the option and make sure that quad output is checked if you want quads. Otherwise, you're going to end up with uh, triangulated alpha cards. If that's okay for you, then you don't need to worry about that. But personally, I like to keep it quadded. And we're going to hit apply. There we go. Now, Notice down here at the bottom, these are all grouped. I kind of uh, OCD about uh, keeping everything nice and clean when it comes to my outliner. So we're going to go to Edit, Ungroup, and that's the actual geometry now. Now the rest of this we don't even need anymore, so we can trash the strokes and we can trash the group that the splines came in with. Okay, now we're going to select all the geo. And you notice by default it has this black uh, look to it. Don't freak out. That's just because it's using a black material. So we're going to go to our hypershade. We're going to assign the default Lambert to it. And you notice that it's only applied it to the inside. And that's just because um, in Maya 2015, if I remember correctly, it renders of reverse normals as black. So if we just hit... Uh, go back to our polygon menu, normals, reverse our normals, give my time to do his calculations, beep beep boop, there we go. And there's our hair. Now, it also will make essentially one material group for every single um, piece of hair that we have, so if you're like me and want to keep things clean, after you assign the default Lambert to everything, look under Edit, and you're going to want to delete unused nodes. And that way when you import it back into whatever, you're not going to get a crazy, uh, huge, screwed up uh, hypergraph. Or hypershade, excuse me. So the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select all of this. Mesh. Well, actually, before I do that, before I forget, open up your UV editor, and you notice that the UVs for each card are already laid out. So that should help when it comes time to actually texture and break these up into individual groups. So before I export it, I'm just going to merge them all into uh, one piece.
combine. Let mine do its calculations. Beep, beep, boop. Then I'm just going to delete my history. There we go. And here is our hair. And you notice that our triangle count is in just above 4,000, which, you know, for a nice, you know, next gen looking character, I wouldn't say breaks the bank too much. But like I said, you can cull uh, more faces if you want by deleting them or uh, you can use fewer, a smaller density number in x when you're actually getting it done. And then we can just save this out as a regular OBJ. So export selection. We're going to name the boy hair. Save. Yes. And then we can toss it into, you know, real-time engine like Marmoset because it's kick-ass. And this is what I brought in before. And as you can see, That's actually pretty good coverage. Uh, with some proper hair textures, we can have a nice looking head of hair, and with a few custom placed cards, we can get some nice variety in there that makes everything look amazing. So uh, that actually just about wraps it up. Um, hope this helped, uh, and uh, thanks very much for your time. Uh, peace out.